Hi there, this is Niels from New Relic, and today we're going to be looking at how you can calculate the impact of slow performance on your mobile app's user base using New Relic Mobile and New Relic Insights. The events that we'll leverage will be the mobile session events and the mobile request event types in conjunction with the response time attribute available on the mobile request event. A quick note about the mobile request event type. You'll need to ensure that your app is using version 5.14 or greater of the Android or iOS SDKs and that you've enabled the network request feature flag, which in turn omits the mobile request event type from the New Relic mobile agent of your choice. Let's say that we'd like to understand the percentage of users who are experiencing greater than three second response times for our Insights application, which is an iOS app. In order to do this, we'll need to write a query which does the following. Calculates the number of users who have more than three second response time and divides that by the total number of users times 100, which would give us effectively the percentage of users who are being impacted by greater than three second response times. Let's first start with some basic queries to understand the total number of users that we've had during the time period we're interested in and the total number of users impacted by greater than three second response time. In this initial query, you can see that we've unique counted the UUID attribute from the mobile session event where our application is our Insights for iOS production application over the last three days. Here we have 613 users during this time period. We can iterate on this query to now calculate the percentage of users who are impacted by greater than three second response times by unique counting the UUID attribute on the mobile request event. We want to filter this query such that we're only looking at users who had a greater response time than three seconds long. We want to make sure that we're still looking at the iOS application for insights and that we're looking at a similar time period. You can see here that we have 191 users impacted by greater than three second response times. Something to keep in mind is that it's often the case that teams are tracking multiple applications and versions of those applications in a single New Relic account. Additionally, because the mobile request event type is enabled through your SDK's config settings, it's possible that after you've enabled this feature flag, you still have versions in use which are emitting session events but are not emitting request events. This matters because if you're looking to calculate the percentage of users impacted by slow response times, then you need to ensure both your numerator and denominator, which are creating the percentage, are looking at versions which are tracking both event types at the same time. Let's take a look at an example query to help you better visualize what we mean. Here, we'll take the mobile session event and we'll prefix it ahead of the unique user identifier and we'll label this as mobile session users. Then, we're going to count users from the mobile request event and compare this across different versions of our application. We'll do that by adding a facet clause at the end of our query, which allows us to look at the various versions. Don't forget to add your mobile request event type when querying for both events in the same query. You can see from the result of this query that version 1.71 has 586 users who have emitted mobile session events and 473 users who have emitted mobile request events. It is expected that these numbers will be slightly different. That's because mobile requests are not always successful. Therefore, mobile sessions count both successful requests and failed requests in the same query. However, if you were to look at the different versions below, let's say version 1.6.9, you'll notice that there are no mobile request users counted. That's because we had not yet enabled the feature flag for mobile requests on that version. 
we did for version 1.7 or greater. In this case, what we can do is add an additional filter to our query where we're looking for all versions greater than 1.7. As you can see from the result, we've now filtered our query to only the two versions which are both emitting each event type. Now that we have the right app and versions, let's get back to calculating the percentage of users impacted by three or greater second response times. We can start by using the histogram function to understand the distribution of response times. In this example query, we're looking at response times for our iOS application in 10 different buckets, where the largest bucket includes all response times greater than three seconds. Because we're still faceted by app version, we're seeing it across both. If we remove this, we'll get a more traditional histogram look, which tells us the various counts of users within each distribution. In order to understand the percentage of people impacted by greater than three second response times, we'll use the percentage function. We'll unique count the number of users where their response time was greater than three seconds, here we can see that 32.5% of people are affected by more than 3 second response times. The way that the percentage function is working in this query is that it's unique counting the UUIDs from both tables where the response time is greater than 3 seconds as the numerator. Because only the mobile request events have response time attributes, we've limited the count to only that event type. Then. For the denominator, we're simply unique counting all user IDs across both event types. Because the mobile request users are simply a subset of the mobile session users, we don't have any miscounts or duplicates. If we remove the app version from our query, we can then see that the number is slightly skewed lower. This is because we're now including versions which do not have the mobile request events, and we've inflated the number of users from the mobile session events. This concludes our demonstration of how to use the mobile request and mobile session events to calculate the impact of slow performance on your user base. I hope that you found this video helpful, and as always, happy troubleshooting.